Ever since we made a video on turning a Zotac Mini PC into a PFSense firewall, which in my dad is still happily running in John's home lab, I've been on the hunt to go even smaller. And today, friends, we might have a winner in this. This is the Zima board. Welcome home labbers and self hosters, Rich here. And in today's video, we're gonna take this guy here, the Zima board 832, turn it into a PFSense firewall and test how well it performs. Let's get down to business. This is the Zima board 832 an x86 single board computer running a four core Intel Celeron N3450 CPU with a base clock of 1.1 gigahertz and a boost to 2.2 gigahertz. The Zima board is a single board computer with everything you need all in a super small package. This model is the 832, which rocks eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM and has 32 gigs of onboard eMMC 5.1 storage. The Zima board is far more unique than your run of the mill x86 SPCs though. This board has connectivity that is rather unheard of in the realm of SBCs. For example, the Zima board has two 1 gig Ethernet ports, two 6 gigabit SATA ports, two USB 3.0 ports, a mini display port for 4K video, and lastly, an exposed discrete PCI Express 2.0 4X slot. All of this in a 6 watt package. The Zima board is entirely fanless and passively cooled by the built in heatsink supports hardware virtualization, AESNI for encrypt decrypt, and weighs in at a scant 278 grams. There are three different models of Zima board you can choose from. Starting at $120 for the cheapest board that has two cores, two gigs of RAM, and 16 gigs of onboard storage. A $160 board with four cores, four gigs of RAM, and 32 gigs of onboard storage. And the board we're using here with four cores, eight gigs of RAM, and 32 gigs of storage for $200. Out of the box, the Zima board comes installed with Casa OS, which is based on Debian and features a simple web GUI with built-in Docker support so you can start running containers and apps right away. Casa OS also has a full feature desktop for those of you interested in running the Zima board as a miniature desktop PC. All of that is nice, but we're here to see if this little SBC can handle PFSense and handle it well. So let's get PFSense installed and up and running. We made a video about how to install PFSense, so check the card in the top right if you need help building a bootstick and doing the installation. Getting PFSense installed on the Zima board was no different than installing it on a regular full-size PC. The beauty of x86 SBCs is that getting into the BIOS, selecting your boot disk, and kicking off installation via a USB stick is super simple compared to the work necessary on an ARM-based SBC. PFSense took a little over four minutes to install on the Zima board with no issues to report. Throw in another minute or two for the web UI wizard walkthrough, so in roughly six minutes, we had a ready to use PFSense firewall up and running, which was awesome. I wanna take a moment and address what will no doubtly be a hot button topic for this video, and that's the Realtek NICs on the Zima board. Yes, the Zima board has two Realtek 8111H based NICs on board, and historically, there have been issues with Realtek drivers and BSD. Now, there are two ways we can resolve these issues. The first is to install the compiled and updated NIC drivers in BSD, which requires you to enable SSH, install a driver package, and add modifications to the boot config. Or the second and simpler method, disable hardware checksum offloading for the NIC in the PFSense web UI. I wanted to walk you guys through that really quickly, so let's do that now. To disable hardware checksum offloading in PFSense, let's head up to System on top, and then click Advanced. Click on the Network tab, scroll down to the Network Interfaces section, and click Disable Hardware Checksum Offloading. Now scroll down to the bottom and click the Save button. The last step is to reboot the firewall to enact our changes. So we'll head back to the top, click on Diagnostics, and then down to Reboot. A normal reboot is all we need here, so we'll click Submit to reboot our Zima Board PFSense box. All right, friends, let's run some performance tests to see how well the Zima board can handle flinging packets between the two NICs. We'll run two basic tests here. First, we'll run an iPerf3 test to test raw TCP throughput through the netting firewall to see the sustained throughput. And then we'll run an HTML5 speed test to see how well the system manages netting HTTP traffic. Let's kick off our iPerf3 test. We'll be running the iPerf3 test for a total of 300 seconds or five minutes to give ourselves a good average on the throughput through the firewall. We'll speed this up for brevity. And go. And the results are in. In the five minute test, we moved nearly 32 gigs of data through the firewall with a sustained average of 912 megabits a second in and out. That's exactly what we'd expect. Let's move on to our HTML5 speed test. Open Speed Test is a free self-hosted HTML5 speed test tool that I run in a Docker container. 
it's a great way to run simple HTML speed tests internally or externally, and I use it very often to test real-world bandwidth between my internet connection and others on the net. There's very little for us to do here other than to hit the start button, so let's do that now. And the results are in. I was able to reach 815.6 megabits down and 980.3 megabits up. These are great numbers and once again show that the Zima board has plenty of power to handle firewall duties. Okay, let's talk about thermals. The Zima board has this big old heatsink that covers the entire top of the SBC. That heatsink has plenty of mass to it, so how warm does it get when we start pushing packets? I'm going to set up the Zima board and run another test. This time I'll push iPerf for a good 30 minutes and see how warm that heatsink gets. We'll be using my thermal camera to get a good idea of the temps. Let's check it out. And here we go. We'll speed this up a bit for brevity. During this run, the Zima board only reached a maximum temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The system stayed cool and didn't throttle at any time. That's pretty impressive. So here are my final thoughts. Today, the Zima board is the best SBC I've tested in terms of performance for PFSense. It's low powered, yet fully capable of handling the job of a one gig firewall with plenty of performance to spare. If you're thinking about building a PFSense or OpenSense firewall out of a Zima board, I'd recommend purchasing the 432 model because it's a bit cheaper. It has half the RAM of the 832 that we reviewed here, but PFSense requires a minimum of one gig of RAM anyway, so four gigs is plenty and you'll shave 40 bucks off the top. I also think this is a great way for people to get into building their own home firewall and getting off the cheap Asus, Netgear, and TP-Link hardware that's out there. It's 2023, people. Let's up your internet protection game. If there are any other types of services or systems you'd like to see us set up with the Zima board, get down in those comments and let us know. And now that you finished watching this video, how about digging into our other home lab and virtualization videos we've done in the past? If you're looking to get into virtualization, home labbing, or self-hosting, we can help. The strike and sound, a Is woven in the seams of your